Retrieving encrypted message. If you're a new or returning agent entering Washington DC, everything can be quite overwhelming. There's so much to do, so much to earn, and so much to uncover. To provide something of a helping hand, I'll explain the basics on everything, from the open world and missions to the character building and endgame. Let's start at the very beginning. Tom Clancy's The Division 2 is a third-person, open-world, co-op, looter shooter RPG. Alone or with up to three group members, you enter the capital of the United States, Washington DC. After the Green Poison virus killed roughly 90% of the population on Black Friday 2015, the world, and in particular the United States, fell victim to chaos and disorder. This activated a first and second wave of division agents. These agents are part of a strategic homeland division with the goal to maintain continuity of government in the event of a pandemic. Seven months after the start of the chaos you set foot in DC. Lawlessness and instability threaten the society and rumors of a coup in the capital are only amplifying the chaos. Defeat the hostile factions, cover the secrets and bring peace to DC. That's your objective. As you enter the capital, you start in the base of operations, or BOO for short. This is your headquarters, located in the White House where you can find everything you need. Civilians, JTF and other staff update you with missions, activities, skill, gear and weapons and much more. Across the map you will run into settlements and safe houses, both being safe areas similar to the BOO. Settlements are, as the name suggests, safe havens for civilians and serve as mini booths as you can buy weapons and gear, collect missions and projects and upgrade it to unlock staff. This grants you bonuses and upgrades to the boo and in turn to yourself. Safe houses are small safe spaces where you can get your gear and weapons from your stash or unlock projects and allocations to activities and shade deck caches, which we'll get to in a minute. You are guided through the open world, also known as the light zone, by main missions. Each one telling a story, allowing you to fight back against the enemies of DC. These missions can be found across the many districts of DC, but you're free to roam the open world where you'll find side missions, shade tech caches, control points and random open world activities. Keep in mind that the many districts also have a level cap. Side missions are a smaller main mission with smaller rewards. However, as opposed to the first game, these tell more of a story. Shade deck caches are scattered across the map and contain shade deck for you to collect. The shade deck can be used to unlock skills and perks, which we'll get to later in the video. Control points are a new addition to the game. Spread out over the map, you can find control points held by allies or enemies at key locations. You have to take over and or defend these to get control over the city and allow your allies, the civilians from the settlements, to grow their influence. Upon taking over a control point, it's unlocked as a fast travel point, which helps you get around the map and you're rewarded with loot as well. Other than that, you can also donate materials to the control point officer to help civilians even more. But perhaps the open world itself has the most immersive experience to offer. You will find random activities to happen as you move through the city. You can choose to do these activities or ignore them. You will come across supply drops, public executions, propaganda broadcasts, territory controls and rescue operations. Each of these rewards you with loot and allows you to save or help civilians and are often bound to projects. Projects can be found at the progress officer in the boo or in the settlements and offer you contracts with specific assignments to complete in the open world, like taking over a control point or preventing a public execution. Upon completion, you're rewarded with blueprints for craftable weapons, gear and mods. Where the light zone only allows for PvE or player versus environment, the dark zones, of which there are now three, allow for PvEVP, simply meaning player versus environment versus player. These are the most dangerous places in the city, abandoned by the authorities. These lawless areas are filled with the most dangerous enemies in the city, but also the best loot. It's high risk, high reward. Dark zones east, west or south are all large areas with landmarks held by hostile factions, including named enemies, which are basically bosses. However, the largest appeal for many players is to go rogue. There are three statuses when going rogue. If you lockpick supply crates, hack hack shade terminals for resources or steal another player's loot, you will be marked as a rogue. If you kill other agents, you will be marked as disavowed rogue and after killing 5 or more agents, you will be marked as manhunt. You will appear as a target on the minimap 
but there are also bigger rewards in terms of loot and experience. These activities grant you Dark Zone experience, which can be used for Dark Zone perks. Contaminated or uncontaminated loot, which you can extract at specific extraction points to upgrade your build. As you gain levels in the Dark Zone, which is a separate progression bar, you unlock the Dark Zone perks in tiers every so many levels. Each tier allows you to choose one perk for that tier, so you have multiple to choose from per tier. We can only select one, and that goes up to max level. These perks can increase your back capacity for contaminated items or anything else, for example. But let's say you're strictly a PvP guy or girl, then conflict is more for you. Look up the PvP matchmaker in the boot to search for a conflict match. Conflict is the overlapping term for skirmish and domination, both modes taking place on three unique maps outside of the open world. Skirmish is a 4v4 team deathmatch starting both teams with 16 reinforcements. The goal is to deplete your enemy's reinforcements faster than they deplete yours. Domination is similarly to Skirmish a 4v4 mode, but the objective is to capture the three objectives, Alpha, Bravo and Charlie. Each tick will reward your team with points, each objective you capture increases that amount of points and the first team to reach 750 points wins. But the reason you play any of these missions, activities, Dark Zone or Conflict, besides progressing the story, is to unlock and find loot. Loot in the form of weapons, gear and mods. As an agent you can equip two primary weapons, a sidearm, six gear pieces and mods on pretty much all of it. The different kind of weapons and gear come with armor, attributes and talents, which increase your agent's power by increasing your agent's stats. This loot increases in level as you do, up to level 30 and it increases in quality too. Worn items, the grey ones being the weakest and the high end items, the golden or yellow ones being the strongest, with the exception for exotics. Weapons, gear and mods are rewarded through completing any mission or activity in the game. Or they are craftable, like I mentioned. In terms of gear, we can also talk about brand sets, gear sets, talents and mods. But we'll save that for another video to go in depth. I'll actually do that tomorrow. The same goes for the weapons. Looking up the Quartermaster in the boo, we're moving on to skills and perks. Skills are upgrades to your arsenal, of which there are 8. We have the Chem Launcher, Drone, Firefly, Hive, Pulse, Seeker Mine, Shield and Turret. Each of these skills is unique in how they work, all have 3 to 5 variants and up to 3 mods that increase the stats on it. Perks are passive bonuses and are unlocked with Shade Deck 2. It unlocks weapon mods, extra slots for weapons and skills and many other bonuses. The weapons, gear, skills and mods you unlock along the way all build up to the end game. Upon reaching level 30 a lot of things will change. DZ will be invaded by the Black Tusks, a high-tech private military company that easily outgears you. They take over the map, including every control point, blockade settlements and take over main missions and strongholds. But we'll talk about all of this in good time. On top of that, raids will become available. 8 player incursions that are the hardest activity in the game. And to top it off, you can collect bounties on specialized archetypes from each of the factions, as well as buy the best loot from a secret vendor that randomly appears on the map. Luckily, as you enter the end game, you receive a specialization. The Demolitionist, Sharpshooter or Survivalist, and three others coming in the future, provide you with a signature weapon and a whole new skill tree to unlock more perks, mods and bonuses. It's insane. It's too much to go into at the moment, as with pretty much all of it, as this is just a basic guide, but as you've already had to take in all the information, I'll create another video on it pretty soon. From the missions to the Dark Zone, building your character with the right loot and endgame, there's an absolute massive amount of content you need to dig through. And only more will be added. It's, uh, it's massive. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed or used the guide, I would like to ask you to like or dislike, share, subscribe and click the notification bell to become part of the Masterminds HD community and notification squad. On top of that, you can follow me on Twitter for daily updates and join my Discord if you're looking for an engaged community that revolves around Tom Clancy Division 1 and 2. Both links are in the description. Visit my Patreon page through the link in the description if you're interested in intel briefs on stories, characters and weapon and build guides with the summarized information from the corresponding videos. To end the video, I have a question for you. What are you most excited about in Tom Clancy's The Division 2? Leave your answer in the comment section down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. 
I'll talk to you in the next video on Discord or on Twitter. Peace out.